when we see the magnanimity of god all around us his love his compassion his mercy the way he meticulously takes care of each and every one of his creations and if we can only observe that we could easily come to realize how limited we are in that limitation we can only feel humility our mission strives to spread love and light to every corner but to truly make a difference we need your consideration we're not asking for your donations instead we invite you to subscribe to our mission simply hit that subscribe button click the like and ring the bell button to support every interaction counts every subscription every like every comment helps us with the mission together we can make a difference subscribe now and be a part thank you so very much humility is it's not something that that is structured ordered thoughtful reaction to something that is present no it's not humility is actually is to come to realize who we are in the presence of god pretty much nothing on my second book this is going to be a chapter and uh, it is called theistic activism in other words who we are as we observe the workings of god where do we fit in how do we fit in when we look at adam for instance god asked him to till the land and cultivate it when he created him but he did not have any tools to cultivate he did not have any knowledge about agriculture or cultivating the land or anything like that he had no one to tell him what to do he had no books to refer to it's nothing and there he is for dinner position that he had to do something he was given the plant bearing seeds according to the bible so which means he also has to do that within one season because otherwise the plant bearing seeds become useless so here he has to do all of these things and he had no time to learn yet he had to do it and the second instance god is asking him to name all the animals on the field birds in the air see if you are going to name say about 10 of them sure enough you can name them you can remember their names but you see when you see animals in the field and birds in the air you are literally talking about hundreds and thousands of them naming is easy how are you going to remember them unless you have some means of cataloging them you see this task is so incredible even with multimedia computers we have not finished cataloging them yet okay that's how incredible the task is yet adam did it this context or the the subject of theistic activism is much better described you see bible it only gives us hints it's not taking us deep into the mysteries of it you see but when you are looking at the hints and if you begin to think what is going on then you begin to see how god was active in the life of adam see that is theistic activism you see god was telling him what to do or at least he is saying what god is operating see he is observing what god as doing see this is what jesus says i see what my father has doing and i do likewise see adam was able to do it because he was observing what the father has doing tools knowledge 
everything came so naturally to him because he was observing what the father is doing. You see, when Jesus said that, there are two ways we can, you know, infer that. One is Jesus is God, he is an exception. He can do it, we cannot. On the other hand, if we think, well, Jesus came and lived as a human being so that we could also live just like him, then it becomes a challenge of imitating Jesus in everything we do. That includes observing Father as what he is doing in the present moment. That is called theistic activism. And this is very well explained in Bhagavad Gita in Hinduism. See, in, in the Gita is all about how do we survive as spiritual people in a material universe. See, in a materially connected universe. How do we do that? What is materially connected universe? What does it mean? Materially connected means how matters are connected in a molecular order. Cause and effect. Molecules are causing the other molecules to effect in a certain way. Um, and uh, so it's a matter of how molecules are related, connected, interact and operate as a unity. See, that is material universe. Whether it's real or not, that's completely another story. But that is how we do everything. Even when it comes to um, a school of thought, for instance, theology. We have definitions, we have dogmas, we have doctrines, you know, we have all of those things put in order, we bring them together and define what God is. Christianity is famous for that. It really doesn't matter what school we are looking into, it's a matter of breaking it down, observing the source intelligence, evaluate what is right and wrong about the source intelligence and we choose what is right and keep on building it and connecting and relating and building our theories based on that. That is exactly how every single school of thought is formulated, including theology. You know, politics is like that, businesses are like that. Really, it doesn't matter. See, even modern physics Although there are waves and particles, we are looking at particles. It's how particles are behaving in a given scenario. So our observation is limited to what we can feel, what we can see, what we can observe that is materially functioning together. See, if something is not operating in a material form, our intelligence cannot see that. Our intelligence is not prepared to see that. That's how we see it. The definitions have to connect. Question is, does it work? Well, yeah, it has been working. Consider this. In 1955, we started S&P 500 and we listed 500 companies in it that are the leading companies in the US. Today, more than 90% of the companies are gone out. It's not there. That's not the only example. Every dynasty around the world failed. Every political system failed. Communism failed. Kingdoms failed. Colonizations failed. Everything failed. Even democracy was confronted with, you know, another collapse. So everything we put together has an inherent weakness to it, no matter what kind of intelligence we started out with. Everything that is materially connected 
has an inherent weakness that it is meant to perish. See, gospel says, whatever that is born of perishable will perish. Whatever that is born of imperishable will not perish. Bible says that. So, these materially connected ideas will perish because matters are meant to perish. What is imperishable? See, no matter what God created, God is in it, God is outside of it, you know, God is with it, you can see, you know, some representation of God in every element that has been created by Him. It really doesn't matter what it is. You see, modern physics says the same thing. The quantum fluids, you know, which is a sort of a conscious energy that encapsulates, that is in, you know, that, that, that is in every particle. That is the one that is operating the particle. So the particle does not have a character unless a wave is associated with it. So does the created elements. Unless God is associated with the created elements, that element is not complete. See, so even when we are looking at a bird that is flying out there, can we see the likeness of God in it? See, if we can see that, then we are looking at it, the whole thing of it. Otherwise, we are only looking at the bird. See, when we are looking at the bird and associate that bird with God, then obviously we are seeing the full creation along with God. And this applies even to tiny atoms. See, every created being in the universe, it represents an embodiment of God. Because He created them with His breath. He created them with His love. And He sustains them with His love. That's what is going on. So when we are observing them, when we are looking at them in its wholesomeness, we are looking at something that is very different. How do we feel at that moment? That is humility. See, so when we have that humility within us, we can observe what God is doing at this moment, at the present moment. That is what Jesus was able to do. See, earlier I compared the Fortune 500 companies, 90% of them no longer exist. But you know, there is one institution in the whole world that is still standing. And you know what that is? What? It's a religion. Even after thousands of years, it's still standing. Hinduism, 5,000 years, still standing. Christianity, 2000, still standing. Buddhism, about 1700 years, still standing. Islam, still standing. Why? Because they were founded by people who were able to see what God is doing. See, this is theistic activism. People were able to see what God is doing. They are the ones who founded these religions. They are disciples and they are followers and all of that. What they did intellectually and changed everything, that's a whole different story. Scandals and that and this and all of that, politics, it exists in every religion. It's not just Christianity as an exception. Every religion has it. Regardless, they are still standing strong. The reason why is it was started by people who are able to see what God is doing. 
Do you see that? It goes back to uh, loving one another. And... Yeah, it's not just one another. It's, yeah. it's, it requires loving the whole universe as something that is created by God. Then we can observe God in real action. See, God has not gone into retirement. He is still creating. See, what God, what Jesus was seeing is that creative process as it was taking place. That was meant for him in his ministry. What was evolving at that particular time in real time, Jesus was able to see and he was able to do the same thing. See, this is theistic activism. You see that? That is how Adam was able to cultivate the land, theistic activism. He was able to see what God is doing at that very time. And he was able to replicate it. Otherwise, it's impossible. The task that was given to uh, Adam, logically impossible. See, it's a land. I mean, you cannot till the land without tools. See? Well, it's a story. <laughs> well, it is a story, but there is a mystery to it. And that mystery is theistic activism. See, when we look at it as a story, yeah, it's a story. When we look at what Jesus said, okay, I can see what my father is doing. This is what I'm doing what my father does. Yeah, Jesus is an exception. He is God. Okay, so he was doing it. Yeah, but on the other hand, when you look at it as a mystery, and when you recognize Jesus came to this earth to show us how to live as human beings, then the responsibility is on us to imitate Jesus in everything we do. That includes seeing what Father is doing. Isn't it? It's a humongous responsibility. If that happens, every company we create, everything we innovate, everything we do will survive the test of time, like the religions around the world. 